Welcome back, everybody. This is going to be our playbook episode four. In this episode, we're going to be talking about how to trade the liquidity sweep. This is our favorite pattern on oil. You can use this pattern on other assets, but this is the number one pattern that we use when we are trading oil futures, uh, mainly CL. Um, so basically, all you need for this pattern is price. You don't need any fancy indicators. You just need price. If you want to throw in a volume profile, you can do that as well, which we'll talk about later in the video. But realistically, all you need is a price chart. Okay, so let's start off by talking about what this pattern is. So basically, what we are going to look for on this pattern is we need to find an area that is a very clear support or a very clear resistance. We need to see that accumulation or distribution be formed. And what we like to look for is the liquidity resting on the other side of that level. So let's take this level right here for an example. This level is generating a lot of support below this line right here, which in this case would be below 80.56. We can see that for a few candles here, it was not able to break below that level. Let me go ahead and zoom in here, if you can't see what I'm talking about. So right here, we can see that we were not able to break below that low. So we know that the standard trader, the, the retail trader, they like putting their stop losses below levels like this. So most likely, they're going to be putting their stop losses kind of in this area. So what we know is if we sell off into that area, there will be stop losses or liquidity to grab in that area. So in this case, we actually bounced very aggressively out of that area. So a lot of those people that were trading up here were most likely taking profit, but that doesn't really matter for this trade we still look for that liquidity resting below that major support. Okay, so this trade took a lot longer to play out than we typically look for. You can see that it ran for quite a while before it actually came back and retested that liquidity, but we don't care about any of this price action. Just ignore all of this price action. We don't care what it does. All we care about is where is that resting liquidity and has it been tested? The answer is no, it has not been tested until right here. That is when the trade comes into play. So what we look for when that liquidity is being retested is we look for that swing failure pattern, that sweeping motion. We wanna look for a strong sell-off that is grabbing that low but then it is retracing back above that level. Now, best case scenario, it is doing that motion in one single candle. But as long as it's doing it, I'd say within three candles, the pattern is still playable. So in this case, we did not sweep in one single candle. It actually waited for the next candle, which right here is the 1030 candle to sweep that level. So how, do, how exactly do we take this trade? What we want to do is we want to draw out our level, typically on a 30-minute, a 1-hour, or a 15-minute. We want to find that low on one of the higher time frames. And then when it starts approaching that level, we can go down to the lower time frames. And let me reset my chart here. We can go down to the lower time frames to find that exact entry. Now you can use a footprint chart for this if you guys have access to something like ATOS, uh, or you can just use the candlesticks. Um, so what I typically like to do is I like to use a five or a 15 minute. Those are my favorite time frames for this pattern. And once it starts to reclaim that level, we can start taking our entry. Now, if it starts reclaiming it very quickly, what I typically like to do is I will take a small piece of the trade on the first reclaim, and then I will wait for that candle to close above that level to fully confirm it. So in this case, if we were using the five minute, we would have taken a small position on that doji, and then we would have taken the main position on the sweep 
of that candle close right there. Um, so we would have taken a little bit of drawdown, that's okay. But then we are looking for a retrace of value. So earlier I said you can use mostly candlesticks, but it will help you if you use a volume profile, and this is why. So what we wanna do with the volume profile is we wanna look for our targets. Now, we are not going to be using volume profile the standard way that we typically do by looking at the daily volume profile. What we're gonna be doing for this pattern is we are going to be looking for the most recent impulse. So in this case, this move right here is a strong impulse down. So what we wanna do is we wanna grab a fixed range volume profile and we wanna draw it from the candle that was topping out on this impulse all the way down to where that sweep started. And this will give us the value of this impulse. So we have the value real low, we have the POC, and we have the value real high. So this is what we are going to target while we are taking that sweep. So in this case, we didn't get all of our targets. You kind of stalled out around this node right here, which you always wanna watch out for these really strong nodes because they can hold price down, kind of what we saw uh, right here. So this would have been our main target, the value real low. We could have targeted this major node here, and then we would have targeted the POC and the value real high. If you only wanna use candlesticks, that's completely fine. Just to do standard support and resistance trading, and you want to target a retrace of those levels. Now, you guys know me. I like trading volume profile, so we always target the value levels. Okay, let's go over that one more time really quickly, and then I will go over some more examples a little bit faster now that you guys understand. Let's go back to a higher time frame here. Let me go ahead and reset my chart. Okay, so with oil, we always want to look for these clear accumulation or resistance zones. Now, sometimes these will line up with high of day and low of day. That will not always be the case, um, but they will line up quite often. And that's okay if they line up. It's not a big deal. Okay, we look for that support or that resistance. We want to see a very clear accumulation or distribution. We want to see that price is stalling out on one level. We want to draw that level out and we want to wait for the retest. It doesn't really matter how long it takes, but typically you don't want it to take too long. This example here took a little bit longer than we would have liked. It would have been better if it kind of retested somewhere around there, but it's still okay. Okay, so we wait for the retest. And then finally, the trigger for the trade is a swing failure pattern, a sweeping pattern, where we see a failure of the level and a retrace back above it. The best case scenario is if it does this in one single candle. But if it waits for two to three candles, that is okay. Once that candle sweeps, we can take an aggressive entry on that sweep. And then we want to take another entry on the candle close as long as it's not too far away from the level. If it's really far away from the level, it's just too late. Because what we want to be doing is we want to be putting our stop loss below that sweep. And then we want to be targeting either the value levels or just the standard support and resistance levels on the way back up. Okay, now that you guys understand the pattern, let's take a look at some examples this week. This week was absolutely insane for this pattern. We had one of these trades every single day. All right, let's go ahead and reset and let's go over these trades. So that was the trade that we just used for our example. Let's look at another one right after it. So this trade right here, not as clean. This one is a little bit more choppy, uh, but we can see that there is a bit of resistance here into this day's close and the day's open. Um, so we can see there's a lot of resting liquidity, most likely above those highs. And what do we see here? We see a beautiful wicking pattern off of those highs. Um, so once it started to sweep, we could have taken our short stop loss above the highs. And then once it started to close, we could also take another short there. This would be one of the examples where it might have been a little too far away during the close. So you might have wanted to wait for a bit of a pullback or maybe a retest 
before you took that second entry. Um, it really depends on how much you can get out of your trade. How much do you think you can target? Um, so in this case, we don't see any of this. Pretend we don't see that. That's after the swing. Um, so we only could have targeted most likely somewhere around the middle of this range here and then probably towards the lows. So you can see how that's closing. Let me delete some of this. I'll use a highlighter here to make it a little more obvious. You can see how it's closing right around the middle of where we would have been targeting. So it's a bit of a late close there. So either you can just not take that second entry or you can wait for a pullback to get a better entry on that second one. Okay, so this case here, you can see that we retrace down to the lows. It actually gave you a bit of a low sweep here. So you might have been able to take a low sweep. That one ended up failing quite a bit. All right, next example, let's see here. So this one was a bit more aggressive. So this would be more of an aggressive signal, uh, but same thing here. We see that accumulation. So we know that there's some resting liquidity below that level. Now in this example, they actually take out all of that liquidity and start selling off very rapidly before retracing. So not exactly the same pattern, but we are still seeing a retrace of a very clear support. So once it started to, to retrace that support, you could have taken an entry there. The close was a little high. So once again, you could have taken that close or you could have waited for a pullback. In this example here, the pullback would have definitely been a better entry, but obviously that is hindsight. Um, so in this example, we do want to look at the volume profile. So once again, we're going to grab the high of the impulse. We're going to go all the way down to the bottom. And this gives us our value targets. Um, so in this example here, our target was pretty much right where we entered. So we can't take that. This would have been our main target, the value rate high. And then we would have just had to target um, this upper tail most likely because there is no value inside that area. So you would have just had to target the upper tail. One other thing that I like to do with oil, if it's a case like this where there's no obvious targets, oil loves to trade on its half and whole numbers. So 7950, 80, 8050, stuff like that. Um so if you can if you're struggling to find a target, just target those half and whole numbers. Oil loves those numbers. All right, we've got a few more examples here. Same thing here. This one put in a low. This one is not as obvious because this one's not putting in a major accumulation. It's just putting in that doji. So this would not be the strongest sweeping pattern, but it's still the same idea. We look for those sweeps mostly around the liquidity. If it has to be high or low of day, we can still take those. They're just a little bit weaker. Okay, so we started to fail that level. And in the same candle, this candle right here, you did retrace. So once again, once you started to sweep, you could have taken your first entry. And then on the close, you could have taken your second entry. Stop loss below the candle. And then we're targeting value or we're targeting previous levels. Another example here, this would be a very aggressive example. Kind of the same thing that we saw on the prior day. You sold off very aggressively, but then a very sharp swing pattern, a very sharp retrace. So once it started to sweep, you could have taken an entry. On the close, you could have taken an entry. And then same thing as always. We target value or we target previous levels. And if you can't target either one of those, you target half and whole numbers. Okay, last example here. This one was on Friday. Little bit choppier. But we see a very clear high right here. You kind of failed it right there, a little front run. Tried to go for a breakout, and you swept it on that candle there. So this one is a, is a trade that you possibly would have been stopped out, depending on how tight your stop loss was. If you would have taken this initial sweep, let's say we took the trade right there, and I'll use the highlighter to make it easy. Let's say we would have taken the trade somewhere around right there. This green candle right here that pumps up, 
If you had a very tight stop loss just above that high, you would have been stopped out. You typically do not want to have a stop just above that high. You want to give it some room. So hopefully you weren't using, let's see here, that's like a five cent stop loss. So hopefully you were using more than a five cent stop loss on that high. Uh, but if you weren't, that move would have stopped you out. And if it did stop you out, you could have re-entered on that second sweep right there. And that one played out beautifully. Um, so either you would have taken the initial sweep, possibly been stopped out, or you would have taken the secondary sweep and this one just played out beautifully. So you would have put your stop loss above the sweep. And then same thing that we said earlier. I can pull up this volume profile. We would have targeted the value levels. So POC is too close. Value rate high is too high. We would have used the value rate low as our main target. And then you would have targeted these nodes inside the tail. If you can't target that, we use half and whole numbers. In this case, the half number would have been right there and the whole number would have been right there and then so on and so forth. Another half number there and then almost another whole number on the low. Okay. So these are bullish and bearish patterns. You can trade them both ways. I prefer the shorts because I'm just kind of short biased, but you can trade them either direction. But all right, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this playbook episode four. If you guys did, hit that like button. If you guys are new here, be sure to subscribe. If you guys haven't already, be sure to check out episodes one through three. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.